What's up everyone, Cascobi here and I have the Launchpad Pro Mark III with me in the studio today. So I figured I'd make a little review video on it, kind of covering what's new with this one compared to the old Launchpad Pro, as well as how it differs for this community itself, you know, the kind of light show performer based community. Um, and what's kind of different there because there's a lot of things that will kind of affect how videos like mine are made in the future. So I wanted to cover a lot of what's new and yeah. Let's get started. Before we get into that, a quick word from our sponsor for this video. Melodics is the go-to learning app to help you develop your coordination skills and rhythmic ability when playing Launchpad and other MIDI instruments. With over 400 lessons and fine-tuned guided learning sessions, you'll be playing like a pro in no time. Head to the link in the description below to find both the free trial and my 20% off discount code to get started with your learning journey. So this, as you know, is the LaunchPad Pro Mark III, and it is Novation's new flagship level, pro, top of the line, has everything level launchpad. And it's called the Pro Mark III because it now lines up with the rest of the naming of a lot of other Novation products. So the Launch Key Mini Mark III, the Launchpad Mini Mark III, which I have here as well. But it's interesting because this has skipped the Mark II naming and has now branded the old LaunchPad Pro as the LaunchPad Pro Mark I, which came out at the same time as the Launchpad Mark II. So it's it's been a bit confusing to kind of get the hang of which Launchpad is which, but everything across the board now is a Mark III, so it's all a little bit more consistent. But not the Launchpad X. So hopefully that clears up any confusion. That's how the naming now works for this device. So when you get this thing out of the box, the immediate first thing you'll notice is it is stupidly thin. It is literally half the thickness of the old Launchpad Pro, which is incredible considering how much of an upgrade this is over the last Launchpad. So going around the device, you'll be pleased to know that it now has USB-C on the back of it, replacing the god-awful USB Type-B connector that they used to have on the back of the old Launchpad Pro. So thank you, Novation, for doing that. That's Probably one of my favourite upgrades of this new launchpad. There is something missing from the top of the device though, and if you notice it, the power button is completely missing. So the days of being able to click and turn your launchpad off are gone. Also on the top side of the launchpad, you've got three MIDI jack ports, which you can use to use this device completely standalone. Now moving around to the back, it just has a simple glossy black Novation logo right in the middle. Mine's a little bit scratched, but it's on the back, so no one's ever going to see it. And you've got this huge orange rubber foot to keep the launchpad in place so it doesn't go anywhere. So moving around to the front of the device, you'll notice that the launchpad pro text, the branding that was on the old launchpad, that's completely gone. So you get a much simpler, cleaner interface on the front. The only branding you do have is the Novation logo in the top right of the launchpad, which is actually an LED logo and can be completely customized. So if you want to see a video on that, drop a like down below and let me know you're excited. So another thing you'll notice with the front of this launchpad is it's no longer symmetrical. Each of the four corners on this device are completely different. Top right, you've got that LED logo that I talked about that's the same size as the rest of the main buttons on the launchpad. On the top left, you've got a raised rubber half-size shift button that used to be on the old launchpad pro. And the bottom bottom left you've got a flat plastic setup button that used to be in the top left of the old Launchpad Pro and then in the bottom right corner you've got absolutely nothing so no symmetry across the board here and there's literally just buttons everywhere I mean I guess for this device that's a good thing but coming from a light show designer's point of view the lack of symmetry here is kind of sad and I kind of miss it from the old Launchpad Pro. So going on to the main 64 buttons, these are still velocity sensitive, just like the old Launchpad Pro. But the only difference is, Novation, I don't know what you've done that's different, but these are amazing to play on. Th these, This is a masterpiece right here. I don't know what's different, but the feel of them is just so much more responsive. Playing on these is honestly so much easier than playing on the old launchpad. I just feel like I'm gliding across it when I play it. It's so much nicer to play. I feel like part of that is to do with the slightly larger buttons compared to the old launchpad pro. Maybe it's a new material, maybe it's a new FSR, I'm not sure exactly, but they're so much nicer. So another thing you'll notice on the front of the launchpad is something that's not really been done on any other launchpad before, and they now have two rows of buttons at the bottom, which follow a similar layout to the old Launchpad Pro's bottom row, 
except above that they now have these new track select buttons. So these track select buttons are really useful when it comes to navigating around the sequencer mode and session mode for quickly dotting around projects if you want to make quick adjustments. So looking at the top of the new Launchpad you can see that there's six new major modes compared to the four on the old Launchpad Pro. So some of these modes you'll recognize like the session and the note mode which are stuck around from the old Launchpad Pro. Device mode has moved to the bottom row and then user mode has been replaced with custom mode which allows you to kind of have eight different profiles of sliders and chromatic keyboards and scale keyboards and drum pads and all that kind of stuff for very specific layouts when you need it in a performance. So going on from that, some of the firmware additions that make this device so great include the new brightness slider that's in the setup menu, which I feel like doesn't go down low enough, but the fact that it's there is really useful. Also the new additions to note mode as well as chord mode are incredibly useful for music production and anything similar in terms of live performance with a MIDI instrument. And then the other new mode at the top here is what Novation is most proud of and this is the new sequencer mode. So this sequencer mode kind of takes everything that Novation's learned over the last three years from the circuit and puts it on Launchpad Pro instead so you can map it to external instruments rather than having the kind of inbuilt stuff that this has. So with this mode you can very easily make automated drum patterns as well as melodies all within four different instruments inside of the device. And you can set each of the tracks in the sequencer to send MIDI to a different channel so you can have one input sending lots of different MIDI to four different instruments inside of Ableton just with the launchpad. Another quick thing I wanted to mention is the all new idle animation, which replaces the old launchpad's Vegas mode. But what this means is instead of plugging your launchpad in and not having a data connection, rather than going into the Vegas mode like the old launchpad, it now shows you all of your basic modes so that you can use your Launchpad Pro as a standalone device. But what replaces that Vegas mode is a new idle animation that comes on, if you want it to, after five minutes of inactivity. And this is what it looks like. It's kind of funky, isn't it? Now, I'd hate to talk badly about one of my favorite products of all time, but I'm afraid that's where the positives end. Let's find out why. Now, a little while ago on my Instagram, I posted a photo of this Launchpad and I called it unfinished which at the time I still stick with saying that because since then there has been two minor firmware increment upgrades and I've got to say since then it is a million times better but the reason I called it unfinished back then was basic things with it just didn't seem to work right. For example in the bootloader the brightness slider wasn't working correctly it was responding to lifting off the note rather than pressing down which meant that trying to use it as a slider just didn't work the way you wanted it to. It kind of looks like it's lagging but trust me it's not lagging it's just broken. Which as far as I know because it's in the bootloader it's unfixable which is a little bit disappointing but at the same time I don't particularly use the brightness much when I'm putting new firmware on it. So it's not an overly massive deal. And that brightness slider issue is still around. So if you have one, you can test it and you can see what I mean. Another thing back when I made that post was the Launchpad Pro Mark III was lacking legacy mode and programmer mode. Along with that, there was no brightness slider either, which came default on the Launchpad X, even when it was first released. And when you buy your own Launchpad Pro Mark III, this is the state you'll receive it in. Luckily though, this can be fixed with a quick firmware update from the Novation Components site, which only takes about a minute and is super, super easy. Another thing about legacy mode, like as much as I'm glad it's now been added, it kind of seems like a bit of an afterthought by Novation. Like if you look at any of the change logs, any of their posts that include it, it's always the last thing that gets mentioned as if somebody's made the post and gone, oh yeah, we've, we've done legacy mode as well. I forgot about that. And for the 1.2 release, they had a video demonstrating every other feature that they added in the 1.2 firmware release, but not legacy mode. And I understand that you probably can't make an entire two or three minute video on just a grid layout. I get that. Still though, the fact that it's here now allows thousands of people to make Launchpad projects as quickly and as simply as they possibly can. So there's a plus. Another thing I noticed on the new Launchpad and the Launchpad X in fact is that the lights seem a lot darker than they do on the Launchpad Mini Mark III. Like seriously, putting them side by side, you can tell that the Mini Mark III lights are way brighter. And for a Launchpad that is almost four times the price, 
the least you can expect is the same brightness in lights. Novation get around this by shipping the Launchpad Mini Mark III with its brightness set halfway rather than full so it just looks the same as the Pro. But if you know where the setup menu is, you can just up the brightness and that doesn't fix the issue. It's just hiding a bigger issue that the Pro Mark III actually has. Speaking of weird things about lights, another thing I've noticed is something else that can't be fixed and it's the fact that the light from the edge buttons ends up coming through the main buttons, which can kind of look a bit weird, but that's not the case on any other launch pad. It just kind of seems that light has just been let to run free on the inside of the device. But hold on, there is another weird thing about the lights on this device. And I'm gonna compare it to the Mini Mark III again, because it seems to do it better than the Launchpad Pro. And hopefully this is something that can be fixed because I've seen it get better since this Launchpad first came out, but it's not quite there yet. And what I'm talking about here is the lack of consistency when it comes to processing lights on the Launchpad Mini Mark III and even X as well compared to the Pro Mark III. The Pro just seems to be a lot slower and it can't quite handle a lot of the stuff that's just a little bit quicker than your average light effect, whereas the other two seem to be able to handle it just fine. It's kind of hard to notice it, but if you put it in slow motion, it's obvious that there's something going wrong here. Now I understand that light shows probably aren't the main focus for Novation at this point. It's not been advertised that this launch pad is light show capable anywhere on their site. The fact that I'm making light shows for it is kind of a bonus at this point. Well, lightsaber died. <laughs> but taking into account the design of the old Launchpad Pro with its symmetrical edges and its new RGB buttons, it kind of looked like it was meant to be the light show designer's dream. And coming from that to this new launch pad that is seemingly worse at handling lights than the Mini, it's a bit of an odd design choice to me. Anyway, enough about the lights. I probably bored you, I'm sorry, but that's that's an important factor that I needed to mention about it. Something else I wanted to pick up on about this launch pad is something that you probably won't have realized from any of the advertising for this launch pad. This is the first launch pad to feature tactile clicky buttons around the edge which makes me feel like using the edge buttons is more of an interaction with the software within the launch pad rather than using them as like a toggle to get to a certain mode like it was on the old launch pad pro. I don't know if that makes sense, but the fact that they're clicky just kind of gives off like a different vibe to me. But using them, having been so used to those kind of push down like rubber dome buttons, it's it's interesting in a live performance aspect. Because I've been in a situation where I've been in the middle of a live performance, wanting to change over to the next page, and then pressing down those side buttons at the same velocity I'd play like a normal note, just feels wrong, it just feels like I'm gonna break them. Luckily I haven't so far, but who knows how that'll pan out. 100%, they're definitely really satisfying to press down, they make a good noise, look. They kind of remind me a little bit of the Ableton Push 2's clicky buttons, which are actually used to interact with the software rather than in a performance context. So maybe that's where Novation's coming from here. Not 100% sure. But I also wanted to talk about durability because that's actually quite an important aspect of the launch pad, especially if you're going to be taking it around to gigs, like doing performances. Well, whenever gigs start back up again. Um, it's going to be very important for this launch pad that you can pick it up not have to worry about it and just get it out, perform, be done, go home, right? But an issue on that front is one that I found out within about 15 seconds of opening the box of this launch pad. It is way more flexible than the old launch pad, which is worrying because I, I don't want to snap it in half. Like, yeah, it's nice having a thin design. And this completely goes against all the morals of the old launch pad pro because literally it's still there on the Focusrite store site, they have the mentality of throw it in the bag and then go to a gig and it's fine. Whereas I don't think this launch pad is gonna be able to hold up to that. Now I hate to be so negative about a device that is essentially still really good, but I would rather give you the point of view of somebody who's used it almost every day for almost a year. And I'm by no means saying don't get this launch pad. It honestly sits in my top three favorite MIDI controllers of all time. And the others are all launch pads. And that's because I've made some stuff with this one that I'm incredibly proud of. And it's enabled me to do that. So I cannot fault it there. It's so nice to play. The fact that it's so thin makes recording videos a million times easier. But if I'm real with you, my favorite launch pad right now is the Launchpad Mini Mark III. 
Thanks a lot everyone for watching. Hopefully you got some nice insider information on the new Launchpad Pro Mark III. Get one for yourself. I'd love to see what you guys can make with it. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Stay safe.